Hello and welcome to another C Sharp tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to learn about if else structures, nested if structures, and switch structures. Last tutorial, you learned if if statements or if structures, and they're pretty simple, right? We said if something, then we're going to do things. Okay. So, and we learned about booleans too. So, boolean can do something equals true. Sure. Why not? Oh, what the heck. Oh my gosh, I can't type. Okay, there we go. So it's going to go in here, and we can write something like console.write line I, oh, not that. I did something. Okay, we run this. Good, it worked, right? But well, you've seen this before, right? So we're going to add another structure called the else structure. And it goes with the if structure. You need an if structure to use this else structure. What this basically does is it goes at the end of an if structure after the curly braces. After the closing curly brace, you type in else, and you type in two more curly braces. And what this basically does is whatever, if it can't do this right here, it goes to the else statement. So it's either going to go here or here. If this doesn't work out, if that's not true, if it's false, then it's going to go to the else. So it's basically saying, if can do something, it's going to do this. Otherwise, else is going to do things here. So otherwise, run here. OK? And we're just going to write something like this. I did nothing. And we're just going to put a uh, upset face, sad face, and we're going to change this to false, test it, so it's not going to be true, it's not going to run this, so it's going to go here, hopefully, so let's test this, and it said I did nothing, good, and I did not want to do that, okay, pretty simple, right, there's another thing we can do, we can add an if statement here too, we can use an else if statement, so basically what this is saying is it's going to go, the program's going to go here. It's going to say if can do something. Oh no, I can't do something. So it's going to go here. It's going to test another expression. We're going to make another Boolean. We're going to say can do something else. And we're going to say true. You can do something else. Like go to the movies or something. I don't know. And we're going to test if you can go do something else. So if you can do something, nope else if can't do something else true then we're gonna go in here so it's like two if statements string together except it's not going to run this if statement if this is already true so we're gonna run this see what happens good it worked if we put this false let's see what happens nope didn't do it good that's what we wanted and it doesn't have to be limited to just two structures. We can add as many of these as we want. Okay, so we can add another else. We can make this else if. We can make another else statement here. We can just make tons and tons of if and else statements to accommodate every possible situation there could be. But this is sort of tedious, right? Uh, this is not really what you want, what you want to do. So, um, let's get rid of this. There's another thing we can do. I'm not sure if you noticed, but these, all these structures, like the class, this function right here, the main function, they're all nested in each other. So there's structures within structures. We can do the same thing with the if statements. So if we copy this if statement and we paste it inside of it, voila. We got two if statements inside of each other. So if if can do something, say yay. I did something. Smiley face. Okay. You copy this. Yay! I did something else. Two. So it's gonna say if I can do something, and it's gonna run this. If it can do something, it's gonna say yay! I did something. After it does that, it's going to check, can I do something else? If you can, it's going to say, yay, I did something else too. 
So we're going to set both of these to true. And as you might expect, both of them fire. Both of them fire off and they work. But if we set this to false, if it can do something, it's not going to even consider this if statement. It's just going to skip it. It's going to go to the end. You see, it's just going to say end of program. It's not going to fire this console.write line. So it works how you might expect it to work. Uh, pretty simple. I'm going to show you one last thing that's pretty useful. It's called the switch structure. Remember when I was showing that big if else statement? Okay, that's pretty messy. So this is one way where uh, it won't become that messy. So we're going to actually need user input for this. So I'm just going to say int number. We're not going to assign any value to it yet. And we're going to say number equals uh, convert dot to int 32. And we're going to say console dot read line. We get a number, we're going to put it in our switch expression. And what this basically does is it takes this number and we can give many cases of what we want to do when this number is a certain number. Okay, so this is one case. So in case zero, that basically means if the number is equal to zero, we're going to do everything in here. Do stuff when number is zero. Okay? And this break means after you do stuff, after you do stuff, exit switch structure. Because we don't want him to do something when he's zero and then go on to do the next thing if he's one. We don't want that. Okay? We just want him to stop, exit out after um, he did stuff when he was zero. Okay, we're like, oh, you did your job. You're done. And this is a very useful way to make menus and things like that. So here, I'll show you a quick example of a menu type thing. So I'm going to say console.write line. And I'm going to say, uh, what would you like to do? And I'm going to say, one attack copy this and make this two and three defend or run okay and this is you might this a lot of games use this uh, algorithm it's like Pokemon for example they might use a switch structure in their program they might depending on what the user wants, attack, defend, or run, it does different things. So if we we type in 1, if we want to attack, we type in 2, if we want to defend, we type in 3, if we want to run. So obviously we don't have to deal with it case 0. So just case 1, case 2, and case 3. Okay, so this case 1 is attack. And we're just going to say console.write line you attacked. Copy this, you defended, and you ran. Okay? And there's one more thing called default. What this basically is, is if none of these cases work, if the number is not 1, 2, or 3, if it's something really weird, like, I don't know, 43, it's going to go here and it's going to run. So we're going to put uh, something. We're going to write uh, that is not a valid input. OK? Now let's go ahead and run this. So it's going to ask me, what would I like to do? Attack, defend, and run. I'm, I'm going to attack. I want to attack. So I press in 1, enter. It says you attacked. End of program. Good. It works. If I test it on all the other things, like two to defend, you defend it, great. End of program. What would you like to do? Run. You ran, yay, okay. It works, right? Okay, let me close that. Okay, I think I did. No, I did. Where are you? There we go. But remember our default thing. 
okay, if I enter like negative 945, it says that is not a valid input. And if we enter another number, like not 94, 945, let's type in another random number, it says that is not a valid input. So that's basically what happens. It's gonna say, it's gonna get this number, check if it's one, check if it's two, check if it's three, whatever it is, it's going to go to that specific case and it's going to do whatever that does. Do, uh, do whatever that is inside of here, okay? And if it can't find any of these, it's going to go the default, okay? You don't actually have to have a default in your switch structure though. So uh, don't worry about that. I'm gonna check the time, okay, we're doing good. Uh, actually, we're sort of running over time. So I'm gonna end it there. Uh, you've learned a lot, you went over a lot, especially the switch structure. Sorry, this is a sort of a long tutorial. I'm gonna try to keep it shorter than this, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please leave a like rating if you liked it. Subscribe, and I hope you see you in the next tutorial.